In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear good people, I'm sure you're well. Today we are on day 22. 23 is tomorrow. 24 is the Wednesday. 25 is Thursday. On the first, closure mass. I'm clapping for myself for consistently following through. And I'm also clapping for you for joining me in this glorious journey. On Saturday, we started a reflection on the shoes. And I want to now uh, finish that and then see whether I can pick up something about the prodigal son and what he was given to wear. I need to maybe to, to, to share with you on that because yesterday, yesterday we celebrated the Luke 15 the prodigal of the prodigal son, I mean the parable of the prodigal son. In the burning bush experience or episode, if you like, Moses removed his shoes. Moses did not decide to remove. Moses was told to remove his shoes. And we can pick so many things on that. I know writers, biblical uh, theologians, who have written about that action of being to remove. It's a whole topic that we can discuss. Moses obeyed. There's nowhere that we have had an, an, an altercation that he told God that maybe the place was not very comfortable for his, for his soft legs, assuming they were. We can also argue that those days, the shoes were not the shoes we know today. They were sandals. And we can discuss that as a topic. Uh, the connection between sandals and the wilderness and the time of Jesus and, you know, and all those other things. We can talk about the life of Moses and why at that point, because he was to get a new assignment, why he did not need shoes. Whatever the case, while all that is very important, it is advisable that uh, we can now pick a few other things. All the angles that we take, none of them is wrong. It's only that I have personally decided to uh, read the Bible from this perspective and ask myself, why would he have been asked to remove? Or, not Moses being asked, what does it mean to remove shoes in the Bible? Number one, removing shoes from the feet in them days was in some cases considered a symbolical transfer of power. Symbolical transfer of power. The removal of shoes could also be considered as an act of cleansing the impurities and sins before addressing God. I, was, I have read extensively about this issue, the theology of the shoes and the removing of the same. When great men and women would go to Rome to be appointed governors and other senior leaders, the writer tells us that when they arrived in Rome, they would arrive there uh, with some various pairs of shoes. The appointing authority, note here, the appointing authority would give them shoes as a sign of investiture power being invested on them and in them. So they would remove their shoes and they would get others from the appointing authority, which was now symbolically transferring some power. On the same, it was also done by the, the kings and the governors who 
retired. It was supposed to mean that now Father CK is retiring. He is the governor or, or, or to the Arameans. And Joshua is taking up from Father CK. So what would happen is that I would hand over my shoes to the incoming governor as a transfer of power now that I am now that I am retiring. In fact, um, I'm also told also I read that those who died in war, those who died in war, part of the things they would carry home eh, are the shoes of the person who died. This made me think of something that happened in 1995. In 1995, the month of February, uh, it was uh, the 10th day of February, in the morning at 9, uh, we lost our second from the youngest brother through a, a road accident. I was with him. Eh? And I remember after I had processed everything to take the body to the morgue and they were clearing the police case because it was a police case, he was hit by a British army vehicle. So it was a whole event, you know, the, the British Army were there, you know, you know for the case to leave from their hands to the police and other things, carrying the body from there to the morgue and later going home. And I remember that I went home carrying only one thing, his pair of shoes. And I remember the reaction uh, from my mom and the other people at home when they saw me carrying my brother's pairs of shoes. Now... Uh, I, I mean, I was just, I was just ref, uh, reflecting on that. So removal, as you have said, it could also be considered uh, as an act of um, cleansing the impurities and the sins before we address God. Then the other thing is, uh, removing shoes in the Bible is thought to indicate that you are putting something off. Aha. Uh -huh. What could it be? Could be your pride, could be your insensitivity, could be your self-sufficiency, could be the spirit of entitlement, could be the spirit of hatred, could be, mention them. So by removing, it means that we are divesting ourselves on whatever it is we have been vesting on, our pride, our this and the other one, and the other one. That reminds us of what the shoe means. Maybe if we get some time, eh, we'll also be able to check on um, what then it means to do that in the context of a bush that is burning but not getting consumed. But my interest was only about the shoes. Uh, the other things, we can reflect on them on later. Allow me to stop there because it is good that I stop. Uh, then we'll be able to pick. I promise you today that I'll take you through the, the subject of dreams and the shoes. Only that. Later we can do the others. Dreams and death. Dreams and blood. Dreams and weddings. Dreams and tiny babies. Dreams and voices of the ancestors. Allah. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Enjoy this day. It's Monday. Thank you.